Can everyone hear me okay? Good. My name is Maria Gerard, and um, I live in Orono, Maine, and I'm also a citizen of the Penobscot Indian Nation. And for uh, those who aren't familiar with uh, the Penobscot tribe, they're located in um, the Penobscot River in central Maine, just um, north of Bangor. And um, Penobscot people have been stewards of, of this land uh, for thousands of years and embedded in our um, cultural teachings, in our traditional teachings, is the fact that uh, women are the um, more or less spokespeople for the water. And so it's w with that lens that I come here tonight to speak with you the concern for the water primarily and all the natural resources in the state. And so I just want to preface my specific concerns about the East-West Corridor with just a couple of statements that I firmly believe and perhaps you would agree with as well. And the first statement is that for many of us Mainers, the Maine wilderness is the heart of our culture and identity. I think that we all can relate to, um, you know, the forest and the mountains and the oceans and, you know, all the wildness that makes Maine, Maine. That's what makes us Mainers. And, um, and it's for that, for that experience of the wilderness that most of our visitors come to this state. The second thing that um, I firmly believe is that our water and our natural landscape are our most valuable resources. A couple years ago, I had um, some visitors from the Southwest who came. And um, my husband and I took them around, took them up to Baxter State Park. They were astounded at the water. They couldn't stop taking pictures of the water. And they couldn't impress upon us enough that this is not common in other places, especially where they came from. And so I think sometimes we have a tendency to take for granted uh, those natural resources, all the trees and the water that we do have. And I don't know if any of you have ever noticed uh, or ever seen this um, nighttime satellite image of the state of Maine. Uh, I think it's a NASA image. And it shows, um, it shows the land at nighttime, and you can see all the bright lights of the city lights. And I was always so impressed with the fact that up in the northern woods area in Maine, there was like this huge black spot, and I loved it. There was nothing there. There wasn't that light pollution to have to deal with. And so um, speaking specifically about the east-west corridor, which as you probably already have learned from the presenters previously, it's more or less a, a shortcut for Canadian truckers at our expense. Um, one of the biggest concerns for uh, the natural resources is the water extraction and degradation. This, um, this corridor would cut through the heart of Maine, um, making accessible, previously unaccessible regions for um, all sorts of nasty stuff. Um, excessive water extraction, perhaps. Uh, Maine has some of the most antiquated uh, water protection laws in the country. Basically, you know, the person with the biggest pump wins, and you can extract as much water as you'd like, uh, regardless of your neighbor's wells going dry. Um, I don't think that it's um, alarmist to talk about the practice of hydrofracking. Well, hydrofracking is not present in Maine yet. Um, some of the uh, folks who are involved with Stop the East-West Corridor Coalition have uncovered some uh, maps of potential fracking fields on both sides of our state of Maine. And um, coincidentally, this, this corridor connects those two fracking fields that are on each side of our state. And so most people don't know about hydrofracking here in the state. We haven't had to, to worry about it. But it's wreaking havoc all over uh, the United States and Canada. 
Um, not so much in other parts of the world, because in other parts of the world it's been outlawed, but we still allow it to happen here in the United States and in Canada. And it's a highly um, destructive practice that requires enormous, enormous amounts of water. And um, I don't know if uh, any of you are aware that last year the Maine legislature had voted to approve um, mountaintop mining in Maine. That is another uh, very destructive practice that is happening elsewhere that we haven't had to worry about here in this state. But having a four-lane industrial corridor with a handy pipeline uh, makes for some easy access for these sorts of industries to expand into our state. And, um, you know, sometimes I feel a little bit like I'm being alarmist by saying that, but I think it's probably um, better to be safe than sorry, to, to be aware of this and keep our eyes open to it. The um, actual process of uh, creating the highway is going to requ require enormous resources, and um, many folks have expressed concerns about the eskers. That, um, that protect the drinking water supplies in the state. Um, the gravel eskers um, are in danger of being mined in order to, to build this highway. It's going to take a lot, a lot of resources to build a 220-mile uh, four-lane industrial corridor. Um, now, one of, one of the um, teachings from uh, Native American traditions is that we're all connected. And I don't want to get too esoteric on you all. <laughs> I'll be preaching any sort of religion or spiritual beliefs or anything. But um, the fact that what connects us all is the air and the water uh, is really significant. Um, You've probably heard uh, some of these uh, old native sayings, you know, what befalls the earth befalls the people of the earth is one very famous saying, or people are, uh, do not weave the web of life, but they are just a strand in it. So it really um, speaks to our connectiveness and the fact that air and water know no boundaries. So um, water that gets polluted in Canada from hydrofracking uh, will reach us eventually, because all the water there is is all the water there is. When it's all ruined or it's all dehydrated, uh, we can't go out and buy any more water, at least not that I'm aware of. Um, and so I always like to joke and say, finally, scientists are catching up to my native ancestors because they're starting to catch on that we are all connected. Um, and so I know oftentimes when, um, when us enviro hippie types like to talk about the, the trees and the water and the dirt, uh, I hear it said that, oh, you know, we got plenty of trees in Maine. We got plenty of water in Maine. We can afford to um, let some of that go. And while that may be true that we have plenty here, I think that the state of Maine really is bearing uh, a disproportional uh, brunt of the responsibility. Thank you. Um, you know, for the trees, for the air that we breathe, um, and for the water, and, and maintaining the clean water um, that we all need. Because other places uh, outside of Maine aren't faring so well especially those places uh, where these really exploitative and extractive uh, industries have taken hold. Um, and so I just wanted to close with saying, don't take my word for it. Uh, please do your own research. Um, and I think you will find that um, we need to be very aware. We need to have our eyes wide open and not be blindsided by um, some sort of uh, corporate <laughs> industrial project uh, that's being slipped through. Thank you.